thirst may also be reduced to a certain method. For it is possible to survey the cause why some men render what they assert probable from custom, and others from chance. But all men now will acknowledge that a thing of this kind is the work of art. At present, therefore, those who compose the arts of orations, i.e., who unfold the art of rhetoric, explain only a small part of rhetoric, for credibility is the only artificial part of the art. But the other parts are additions. The rhetoricians, however, of the present day say nothing about enthymemes, which are the substantial part of credibility. But their attention is for the most part directed to things foreign to the purpose. For accusation, pity, anger, and such like passions of the soul do not pertain to the thing itself, no, which is point. to be proved, but to the and judge. To get... Hence, if all judicial processes were conducted in the same manner well, as they are at that. present in some Let's cities, a little bit and especially of... in those that are governed by good laws, these rhetoricians would not have anything to say. For, with respect to all cities, some think it necessary that the laws should thus ordain, but this method is adopted by others, and they forbid rhetoricians to say anything foreign to the purpose, in the same manner as in the Areopagus. And in this respect they think rightly, for it is not proper to pervert the judge by exciting him to anger, or envy, or pity, since this is just as if someone should make the rule distorted, which he intends to use. Again, it is likewise manifest that the only business of the litigant is to show that a thing either is or is not, or that it has or has not been done. But with respect to such things as the legislator has not defined, whether they are great or small, just or unjust, these ought to be known by the judge himself, and he is not to learn them from the litigants. Okay. It is especially requisite, therefore, that laws yeah, which are rightly framed should define all such particulars as can be defined, report. and leave very little to be defined by the judge. <sighs> okay. And so in the first I place, indeed, put... this is requisite, because it is more easy to Just obtain one person, or a few, than many that are intelligent and wise, and who are able to act the part of a legislator and a judge. In the next place, the establishment of laws is the effect of a survey from a long series of past time. But judgments are the result of a survey from recent times, so that it is difficult for those who judge to attribute what is just and advantageous in a becoming manner. That, however, which is the greatest reason of all is that the judgment of the legislator is not conversant with particulars, but with future events and universal. But the judgment of the barrister and the judge is directed Let me, uh, to present work on and this ear a little bit. With which love and hatred and private advantage are frequently conjoined, oil. so that they are no longer sufficiently able to survey the truth. I put my ink but in their own a little peculiar ink pleasure bottle. or pain darkens it their judgment. You know, like squeeze it and then with I'll respect to other particulars, pick up all the oil. It is necessary, as we have said, that and very little should be left in the power of the control. judge. I just I don't but with respect to like, the inquiry, and it keeps it from it going up on me. Or whether it will or will not Okay, so this is what I want to work on here. Or is not. It is necessary that this should be left to the judges, for it is not possible that these things should be foreseen by the legislator. There you go. If then this be the case, it is evident that those rhetoricians who define other parts of an oration accept credibility such, for instance, it's as what the proem or the narration should contain, and each of the other control. parts, these exercise their art in things foreign to the purpose. For in these they affect nothing else except delivering the method by which the judge may be influenced. But they demonstrate nothing respecting artificial credibility, viz. whence someone may become enthymematic, or possess the power of discovering artificial proofs of that which is the subject of controversy. Hence, though there is the same method respecting popular and judicial orations, and the popular is better and more political than the method pertaining to contracts, yet rhetoricians of the present day are silent as to the popular method. 
but all of them endeavor to unfold the art pertaining to the judicial genius, because it is less advantageous in popular orations to serve what is foreign to the purpose, and a popular oration is less pernicious than a judicial discussion, but is more common. For in the former, the judge decides about appropriate concerns, so that nothing else is necessary than to show that the thing is as the counselor asserts it to be. In judicial processes, however, this is not sufficient, but it is requisite to pay attention to the hearer, for the decision is concerning things of a foreign nature. Hence, the judges, looking to their own advantage, and regarding their own pleasure, gratify the litigants, but do not decide with justice. Hence, too, as I have before observed, in many places, the law forbids anything foreign to the purpose to be said, and in these places this law is sufficiently observed by the judges themselves. Since, however, it is evident that the artificial method is conversant with credibility, but credibility is a certain demonstration, for we then especially believe in a thing when we think it is accompanied with demonstration, and a rhetorical demonstration is an enthymeme, and this in short possesses the greatest authority of all credibilities. But an enthymeme is a certain syllogism, and it is the province either of the whole or of a certain part of dialectic to pay attention similarly to every syllogism. This being the case, it is evident that he who is eminently capable of surveying this is from what yeah. propositions and how a syllogism may be made, he will be especially enthymematic in consequence of assuming what the particulars yeah, are of which enthymemes well, are conversant, and what differences they possess with respect to logical syllogisms. For it is the province of the same power to perceive truth, and what is similar to truth, and at the same time, men are by nature sufficiently adapted to the perception of truth, and for the most part obtain it. Hence, he who sagaciously conjectures probabilities is disposed similarly to him who perceives truth. That others, therefore, artificially discuss things foreign to the purpose, and why they especially incline to judicial precepts is evident from what has been said. But rhetoric is useful, because things true and just are naturally more excellent than their contrary, <laughs> so that unless judgments are formed according to what is fit, what is more excellent will be vanquished by its contrary. And this is a thing worthy of reprehension. Farther still, though we should possess the most accurate science, it is not easy when we speak to persuade there some persons by employing that science. For a scientific oration proceeds from discipline, and it is impossible from this to persuade the unlearned. But it is necessary, when addressing these, to procure credibility and frame arguments from such things as are common just as we have asserted in the topics, respecting a conference with the multitude. Farther still, the power of being able to persuade contraries, or the ability of disputing on each side of a question, is necessary, in the same manner as in syllogisms, not in order that we may do both, for it is not proper to persuade to what is base, but that we may not be ignorant how contraries subsist, and that when another person employs those arguments unjustly, we may be able to solve them. No one, therefore, of the other arts syllogistically concludes contraries, but this is alone affected by dialectic and rhetoric, for both of them are similarly conversant with contraries, though the things which are the subjects of their consideration do not subsist similarly, but always, as I may say, things which are true and naturally more excellent are more syllogistic and adapted to procure persuasion. Besides, it is absurd that it should be shameful for a man not to be able to give assistance to his body. I mean, I have to and still that come it should back not be shameful for that him just... not to be able to assist himself by the reasoning power, which on. is more the peculiarity of man than the use of the body. If, however, it should be objected that he who uses unjustly the rhetorical power may injure others in a great degree, this objection is common to everything that is good, except virtue and especially to the most useful things, such as strength, health, riches, and military command. For he who uses things of this kind justly may benefit others in the greatest degree, and by using them unjustly may effect the greatest injury. 
that rhetoric, therefore, is not conversant with one certain definite genus, but resembles in this respect dialectic, and that it is useful, is evident. It is likewise evident that the employment of rhetoric is not to persuade, but to perceive on every subject what is adapted to procure persuasion, in the same manner as in all other arts. For it is not the business of medicine to produce health, but to do everything as much as possible which may procure it, since the healing art may be well exercised upon those that are incapable of being restored to health. In addition, likewise to what has been said, it is the province of the same power to perceive what is persuasive, and what appears to be so, just as it is the province of dialectic to discern what is a true and what is only an apparent syllogism. For the sophistical art does not consist in the power of reasoning, but in deliberate choice, except that here indeed, viz. in the rhetorical art, one man will be a rhetorician from science, but another from deliberate choice. There, however, viz. in dialectic yeah, logic, get the sophist indeed Over is here. from deliberate choice, but the logician is not from deliberate choice, but from the power of reasoning. Chapter 2 Now, therefore, we shall endeavor to speak concerning the method itself, i.e. the rhetorical art, and show how, and from what particulars, we may be able to obtain the end proposed by this art. Again, therefore, as if defining from the beginning, let us discuss what remains. Let rhetoric, then, be the power of perceiving in everything that which is capable of producing persuasion. For this is the employment of no other art, since each of the other arts is doctrinal and persuasive about that which is the subject of its consideration. Thus, for instance, medicine is doctrinal and persuasive about that which is salubrious and morbid, geometry about the properties accidental to magnitudes, and arithmetic about number. The like also takes place in the other arts and sciences, but rhetoric as I may say, appears to be able to survey about any given thing what is adapted to produce persuasion. Hence, okay. also, we say that it does not possess an artificial power about any That's certain be a peculiar bright, definite genus. Just... With respect, however, to things which procure credibility, some of them are without art, but others are artificial, and I call those without art, which are not devised by us, but exist prior to all artificial invention, such as witnesses, questions, writings, and other particulars of the like kind. But those are artificial, okay, so which are capable of being oh. procured methodically and by us, so that it is requisite to use the former and discover the latter. Of the credibility, however, which is procured by argument, there are three species. For one kind, indeed, consists okay. in the manner of the speaker, Another in the disposition of the hearer, and the third in the argument itself, in consequence of demonstrating, or appearing to demonstrate. Credibility, therefore, is procured through manners, when the oration is delivered in such a way as to render the speaker worthy of belief. For about everything, in short, we believe the worthy in a greater degree, and more rapidly. But in those particulars in which an accurate knowledge cannot be obtained, and which are ambiguous, we entirely confined in the decisions of the worthy. Oh, it is, however, I, requisite that this uh, also should happen through the really oration, right. and not entirely from any previous opinion respecting the speaker. Here. For we must not admit what some teachers of rhetoric have asserted in their art, that the probity of the speaker contributes nothing to persuasion, hmm. since nearly, as I may say, Manners possess the most powerful and principal credibility. But credibility is procured through the hearers when their passions are influenced by the oration. For we do not similarly form a judgment when we grieve or rejoice, love or hate, to which species of credibility we assert that those who now deliver the art of rhetoric alone hmm. direct their attention. Each of these particulars, however, what will be elucidated by us when we speak concerning the passions. But belief is produced through arguments, when we show what is true, or appears to be true, from the probabilities pertaining to the several objects of inquiry. 
Since, yeah, however, credibility is Let's affected through these things, little bit of that. this evidence that to obtain the three species of it above mentioned is the province of him who is able to syllogize, who can survey what pertains to manners in the virtues, and in the third place, what pertains to the passions, what each of them is, what quality it possesses, and from what particulars it is ingenerated in the hearer, and how, so that it happens, that rhetoric is, as it were, something which grows upon dialectic and the discussions concerning manners, and it is just to call it political. Hence, rhetoric assumes the form of the political science, and those who profess it do so partly through ignorance, partly from arrogance, and partly from other human causes. For it is a certain particle and resemblance of dialectic, as we observed in the beginning of this treatise. For neither of them is the science of anything definite, and which shows how a thing subsists, but they are certain powers of procuring arguments, and thus we have nearly spoken sufficiently concerning the power which they possess, and how they subsist with respect to each other. With respect, however, to proof either real or apparent, in the same manner as in the dialectic, one kind is induction, another is a true syllogism, and a third is apparent syllogism. Thus also, similarly in rhetoric, for example, indeed is induction. But enthymeme is a syllogism. But I call enthymeme, indeed, a rhetorical syllogism, and example a rhetorical induction. All rhetoricians, however, who procure belief by the proofs which they deduce, affect it either by the examples which they bring, or by enthymemes, and in a certain respect, there is nothing else besides these. Hence, if in short it is necessary to point out any person or uh, thing by a syllogism or the same, induction, yeah. bracket, but this is evident to us from the analytics, close bracket, it is necessary that each of those should be the same with each of these. But what the difference is between example yes, and enthymeme is okay. evident from the topic. Keep that in mind. For there, syllogism um, and induction are previously discussed, because if it is shown in many in similar well. things that what we assert is true, there indeed it is induction, but here it is example. When, however, certain things yes, existing, something have, yeah. else besides happens from these, because these subsist either universally or, for the most part, when this is the case, there, That's indeed, perfect. it is called syllogism, but here, enthymeme. But it is evident that I'm each form of like rhetoric is that color. by these two. For, the like to what we have observed in the methodical treatises, takes green, place right? also in this treatise. For and some relations are um, of the nature of examples, but others are like enthymematic. Rim of the top of the collar has a whitish bluish. Some are delighted with but in between, others with a kind of arguments there for this from examples are no less calculated to persuade about. than others. But yeah, those from to enthymemes here. cause greater perturbation. Yeah. But the reason of this, and how each of these, viz. of examples and enthymemes, is to be used, we shall hereafter explain. Now, however, let us more fully and clearly discuss these very particulars themselves. Okay. For that which now is persuasive is persuasive to someone. Like and here. one thing, indeed, is immediately of itself persuasive and credible, but another because it appears to be proved through things that are credible. No art, however, speculates that which is particular. Thus, for instance, medicine does not speculate what is salubrious to Socrates, or Callias, but what is so to such a one, or to such persons in general, for this is artificial, but particulars are infinite, and are not the objects of science. Nor does rhetoric speculate opinable particulars, such as what is the subject of opinion to Socrates, or Hippias, but that which is the subject of opinion to such or such persons, in the same manner as That's dialectic, come out a bit for right dialectic now. also syllogizes, not from such things as are casual, since certain things appear to be credible, even here. to those who are delirious, but dialectic syllogizes 
from such things okay. as require to be developed by a reasoning process, and rhetoric from such things as are accustomed to take place in consultation. The employment, however, of rhetoric consists in such particulars as are the subject of our consultation, and respecting which we have no art, and it is also conversant with such hearers as are incapable of perceiving a conclusion which is deduced through many media, or of syllogizing remotely, okay. i.e., who are incapable of a long series of reasoning. But we consult about those things, the subsistence of which appears to be so possible in both ways, i.e., which may subsist otherwise than they do. For, with respect so to such things as cannot either in the past or future or present time, have well, a different subsistence. It was more orange. No one consults about these, conceiving that they thus subsist. For it is not possible for anyone to consult otherwise than thus about things of this kind. But it is possible to syllogize and collect some things indeed from such particulars as have been previously syllogistically hmm. inferred, but others from things not inferred by syllogism, but which require syllogism because they are not probable. And it is necessary, indeed, with respect to these, that the consecution of the one should not be easy, on account of its length. For the judge is supposed to be simple, and that the other should not be adapted to persuade, because it does not proceed from things acknowledged, nor from such as are probable. Hence it is necessary that enthymeme and example should be conversant with such things as, for the most part, admit of a various subsistence. And example, indeed, requires induction, but enthymeme syllogism. It is, likewise, necessary that enthymeme and example should consist from a few things, and frequently from fewer than those from which the first syllogism consists. For mm. if any one of these is known, it is not necessary to say anything farther, since the hearer himself will add this. Thus, for instance, for the purpose of concluding that Doricus was victorious in the contest in which the victors were crowned, it is sufficient to say that he conquered in the Olympic Games. But there is mm. no occasion so to add that, that he was go up? because he conquered that in the Olympic goes a little Games, bit higher. for this is known by all men. There are, however, a few necessary things this goes for which rhetorical here. syllogisms consist. For yeah. many of the particulars which are the subjects of judgment and consideration, may have a various subsistence, or subsist otherwise yeah. than they do, right, since yeah. men make their actions the subjects of their consultation and consideration. All actions, likewise, belong to the genus of things which are contingent, and no one of these, as I may say, is from necessity, but things which are for the most part accidental and contingent, must necessarily be syllogistically collected from other things which are of the like kind, and such as are necessary must be deduced by syllogism from necessary propositions. But this is evident to us from the analytics. This then being the case, it, it is around. manifest that, that with respect to those things makes from which enthymemes are deduced, to give some things are necessary, but most of them are such as have a frequency of subsistence. For enthymemes right are deduced from the probabilities and signs, so that it is necessary each of these should be the same with each. For the probable is that which subsists for the most part, around. but not simply according to the definition of some persons. That, however, which is assumed respecting things which may have a various subsistence, has the same relation to that to which the probable is directed, as universal to particular. But with respect to signs, when indeed has okay. such a subsistence as some one of particulars to that which is universal, but another as some one of universals to that okay. which is particular, and of these signs, that indeed which is necessary is an argument, but that which is not necessary is anonymous according to difference. I call therefore those things necessary from which syllogism okay. is produced, on which account also a sign of this is tecmerian or an argument. For when rhetoricians fancy that what they say cannot be solved, then they think they have adduced an argument, as being something this proved has to and go, definite. Uh, kind of round For tecmar and bound, 
or a living artisan, go up to... according to the ancient tongue. With respect to signs, however, that indeed which subsists as particular to universal is just as if some one should say it is a sign that wise are just men, for Socrates was wise and just. This, therefore, is a sign. But what has been asserted, though true, may be solved, okay, so this for it is unsyllogistic. The following, however, as for instance, here. if some one should say it is a sign that a certain person is diseased, for he has a fever, or that some female has been delivered okay. because she has milk, are necessary signs, and which are the uh, only signs... You see that, that other white I have men. here, I use that for my mixing, alone, but for my, uh, but like for the collar, I need, I need some type of white I can use this Utrex that I have here. Oh, uh, you know what, I can use the old hall, I know I can use this one here. This one is a zinc white. But I'm going to use this uh, one who has not a fever may labor under a difficulty of breathing. We have, therefore, now shown what the probable, here. a sign, and an argument oh, are, right. and in what they differ from each other. These, however, are more clearly unfolded in the analytics, where, also, it is shown from what cause some of them are unsyllogistic, but others are syllogistically deduced. And, with respect to example, that it no, is indeed put induction. It somewhere where... And what the subjects are about which it is an induction, Excuse we have me. already shown. It is, however, neither as a part to the whole, nor as the whole to a part, nor as a whole to whole, but that which is as a part to a part, and as the similar to the similar, okay. when both are under the same genus, but the one is more known than the other, is example. Thus, for okay. instance, that Dionysius endeavored to establish a tyrannical government when he required a guard is an example. For Pisistratus, who prior to him for now, had the all I need. I demanded don't need a guard, very much. and this having obtained it, tyrannized over the Athenians, and Theogenes over the Megarensians. All such others, likewise, as are known to have acted in this manner, become an example of Dionysius, with respect to whom. It is not yet known whether he requires a guard with a view to a tyrannical government. All these, however, are under the same universal, viz., that he aspires after tyranny, who requires a guard. And thus we have shown what the particulars are from which the credibility that appears to be demonstrative is yeah. derived. Chapter 3 with respect to enthymemes, however, there is a great difference. So it's a, a completely different way compared to the way that I use for mixing. Because the one that I have for mixing, uh, it's basically uh, I made it just as some syllogism subsists according to the some ingredients. Method. But others pertain to other arts uh, and faculties, some I mean, of which uh, are in existence, and others are not yet discovered. Down. Hence, they are and uh, it's just for mixing this big jar here. Yeah. If rhetoricians employ them more than is fit, and they relinquish their own art. It's not strong enough where but it's not going to overwhelm the value. Uh, so you still see the vibrance. Uh, it's the color still be vibrant. You'll get what you want. From but uh, and these are such. As are conversant in common, the color will still be nice and natural, and strong, and about political concerns, and many things which are specifically different, such for instance as the place respecting the more and the less. For we cannot in any greater degree syllogize from this place, or produce oh. an enthymeme from it respecting what is just or natural than respecting anything else, though these things are specifically different, but peculiar. Or proper syllogisms are those which consist from propositions pertaining to each species and genus. Thus, for instance, okay. the propositions respecting natural things are yeah, those from which natural things can be formed. And ethical instances are those here. which are formed from propositions peculiar to ethical subjects, and from which physical enthymemes cannot be produced. The like also takes place in every subject, and those dialectic and rhetorical syllogisms, indeed, do not render a man wise in any kind of discussion, because they are not conversant with any definite subject, 
but with respect to these that are peculiar and appropriate in proportion as the selection of them is better in such proportion will he who makes the selection latently produce a science different from dialectic and rhetoric for if he should happen to meet with the principles of any science the peculiar syllogisms will no longer pertain either to dialectic or rhetoric but to that science of which he possesses the principles most enthymemes however are derived from those forms which are particular and proper and a few of them are derived from commonplaces as in the topics therefore okay. so here the species and the places of enthymemes from whence they are to be assumed must be distinguished but i call species indeed the peculiar propositions according to each genus and places those propositions which are similarly common to all genera we shall therefore speak first concerning the species and in the first place we shall assume the genera of rhetoric in order that we may ascertain how many there are and with respect to these we shall separately assume the elements and the propositions but the genera of rhetoric are three in number for so many also are the auditors of orations for an oration is composed from three things from the speaker from the thing about which he speaks and from the person to whom he speaks the end also of the speaker is directed to this last i mean to the hearer but it is necessary that the auditor should either be a spectator or a judge and that the judge should be a judge either of things past or future he however who judges of future events is as it were one who speaks in an assembly but he who judges of past events is as it were one who determines causes and he who judges of the power of the oration is as it were a spectator hence there will necessarily be three genera of rhetorical orations the deliberative or that which pertains to counsel the judicial and the demonstrative but of counsel one part is exhortation and another dehortation for always both those who privately give counsel and those who publicly harangue do one of these i e either exhort or dissuade of judgment however one part is accusation but another defence for those that are engaged in controversy must necessarily do one or another of these but of the demonstrative one part is praise and another blame there are also times appropriate to each of these to him who gives counsel indeed to the future for he consults about future events and concerning these either exhorts or dissuades but the time which is adapted to him who judges is the past for always concerning things which have been done no, one accuses and another apologizes and to him who demonstrates the most appropriate time is the present for all those who demonstrate praise or blame according to existing circumstances frequently however they employ the past time for the purpose of recollecting and they form a conjecture of future events but the end to each of these is different and as there are three persons there are three ends to him who gives counsel indeed the end is that which is advantageous and detrimental for the advice of him who exhorts is directed to that which is better but he who dissuades okay, dissuades so from that which is worse and at the same time they assume other things with a view to this viz either the just or the unjust either the beautiful in conduct or the base but to those who judge in courts of judicature the end is the just and the unjust and they also assume other things with a view to these hmm. and to those that praise and blame the end is the beautiful and the base in conduct and they likewise refer other things to these an indication however that the end of each of these is what we have said it is hmm. is that sometimes yeah. there is no controversy yeah. about dark. other things thus for instance what he who is is trying, that? will assert that the things were not done blue. or that he has committed no injury but he will never acknowledge that he has acted unjustly for if he did the trial would be unnecessary in like manner those who give counsel frequently admit other things but will not acknowledge that they have advised what is disadvantageous or that they have dissuaded from what is beneficial frequently however they are not at all concerned whether it is not unjust to enslave the neighboring people and those who have done them no injury 
In like manner, also, those who praise and those who blame do not consider whether the subject of their praise or blame has acted advantageously or perniciously, but frequently applaud him because, disregarding his own interests, he performed some worthy action. Thus, for instance, they praise Achilles because he gave assistance to his friend Patroclus, though he knew it was necessary that he should die himself by giving this assistance, and that it was in his power to live. But to Achilles, indeed, a death of this kind was more honorable, and to live more advantageous. From what has been said, however, it is evident that it is necessary to possess in the first Achilles, place is that Achilles wedge? Uh, no, that's a keystone wedge. Bracket, Achilles is a part of the body bracket, which is called the Achilles. And signs are rhetorical propositions. For in short, syllogism is from propositions, Achilles. but enthymeme is a syllogism know. consisting from the above mentioned propositions. Since, however, impossibilities cannot be performed, either at present or in future, but this can only be asserted of possibilities. Mm. And since, likewise, it is not possible that things which are neither done, nor will be done, should be performed at present, or in future, it is necessary that he who counsels, he who judges, and he who demonstrates, should possess propositions concerning the possible and impossible, and whether a thing has been done mm. or not, and whether it will be or not. Farther still, That's all those who praise right. and blame, yeah. who exhort and dissuade, who accuse and defend, not only endeavor to show the particulars we have mentioned, but also something which is great or small, good or evil, beautiful or base, just or unjust, whether they speak of those things themselves or compare them with each other. This being Achilles. the case, it is evident that it is requisite Achilles. to have propositions concerning magnitude and parvitude the greater and the less, the universal and the particular, such, for instance, as what is a greater or less good, an unjust or a just action, and in a similar manner in other things. And thus we have shown what the things are concerning which it is necessary to assume propositions. Chapter 4 hmm. In the next place, a distinction must be peculiarly made respecting each of these, as, for instance, what the subjects of consultation are, with what demonstrative orations are conversant, and speed. in the third place, what the subjects are about which judgments are employed. In the first place, therefore, it must be assumed what the kind of good or evil is about, which he who advises counsels, since he does not give counsel about all things, but about such as may happen to be or not. But with Can respect to such things as necessarily either are or will be, okay. or which cannot possibly exist, about these there is no the consultation. Hence neither is there consultation going about all contingent so events. High. For there are some goods from nature, and so some from fortune, which notwithstanding they are contingent, down, uh, and may or may not be. Yet consultation contributes nothing to them. But it is evident that consultation is respecting such things as are naturally adapted here. to be referred to us, and the principle of the generation of which is in our power. For our attention is exerted thus far, till we find whether it is possible or impossible for us to perform such things. Accurately, therefore, to enumerate the several particulars, and to distribute into species the subjects of popular discussion, and besides this, to determine according to truth as much as is possible concerning them, it is not necessary at present to investigate, because it is not the province of the rhetorical art, but of an art more allied to wisdom, and more true. For even now, much more is attributed to rhetoric than pertains to its proper theorems. For that which we have before observed is true, that rhetoric is composed, indeed, from the analytic science, and from that political science which is conversant with morals, and it is partly similar to dialectic, and partly to... Sub then, um, that color I have there. Let me, uh, set this. That's 
check the link below. Usually when you mix the background and and you'll see a blue, you see. And you'll think that's all there is, but if you look at it, that's the blue. But to uh, make it all come together, add some flesh. that's what's missing and that's what he did here then I come here to my palette and pick up what's here and work my brush clean my palette nice kind of glows. I'm gonna add some of that Oh Holland white. Just wanna I wanna bring it down more value. I'm a big chump. But without Still gotta come back and hmm. That's good there. Then I'll come out more here, right here. That's it. Now, that year. So Mystical arguments. Here. In proportion, however, as anyone endeavors to discuss either dialectic or rhetoric, right, yeah. not as powers, but as sciences, so far he ignorantly destroys the nature of them. By migrating through this attempt into the sciences of certain subject things, instead of alone making a transition into the powers or faculties of words. At the same time, we shall now speak of whatever it is indeed requisite to distinguish, and which leaves matter of consideration to the political science. For nearly the subjects which are discussed by all those who give counsel are especially five in number, and these are concerning wealth, war and peace, and besides these, the defense of the country, exports and imports, and legislation. Hence, it is requisite that he who is to give counsel about wealth should know the revenues of the country, what they are, and how, if they are deficient, an addition may be made to them, 
and how, if they are too small, they may be augmented. It is likewise necessary that he should be acquainted with all the expenses of the city, and how any unnecessary expense may be removed, and that which is greater than is fit may become less. For men not only become richer by accumulation of property, but also by a decrease of expense. And these things may not only be surveyed from the experience of private affairs, but in order to give counsel about these, it is necessary to be skilled in what has been discovered by others. With respect, however, to war and peace, it is necessary to know the power of the city, what the forces of it are at present, how great they may be, what the nature of the strength is which is possessed, and what addition may be made to it, and farther still, what wars the city has had, and how they have been conducted. And it is not only necessary that he who gives counsel should understand these concerns of his own country, but also those of the neighboring countries. He should likewise be particularly acquainted with those cities against which it is thought fit to wage war, in order that peace may be made with the more powerful, and war undertaken against the less powerful, if requisite. He must also know the forces of these cities, whether they are similar or dissimilar, for in these it is possible to be superior or inferior. It is likewise necessary for this purpose that he should not only have surveyed the wars of his own country, but likewise the event of the wars of other countries, for similars are naturally adapted to be known from similars. Farther still, with respect to the defences of the country, it is requisite not to be ignorant how it may be defended, but to know the multitude of its defenders, and the form of the defence, and the places proper for garrisons. This knowledge, however, cannot be possessed by him who is unacquainted with the country, for such knowledge is necessary, in order that if the defence is less than it ought to be, it may be increased, that if superfluous it may be taken away and that garrisons may be formed in more appropriate places. Again, it is requisite to know what expense is necessary to supply the city with provisions, what the country will afford, and what must be supplied from abroad, what commodities are fit to be imported, and what exported, in order that conventions and compacts may be considered accordingly. For there are two descriptions of men with whom it is necessary the citizens should preserve themselves blameless, viz. with those that are more powerful, and with those that are beneficial to them, in a commercial point of view. And it is necessary, indeed, to be able to survey all these particulars for the sake of security, and in no small degree for the purpose of understanding the business of legislation. For the safety of the city is in the laws, hence it is necessary to know how many forms of government there are, what kind of things are advantageous to each, and by what they are naturally adapted to be corrupted, both among things appropriate and contrary to the polity. But I say, governments are corrupted by things appropriate, because all other polities, except that which is the best, are corrupted by remission and intention. Thus, for instance, a democracy not only becomes more imbecile by remission, so as at length to arrive at an oligarchy, but it is also weakened by vehement intention, okay, just as no, an aquiline and a flat nose not only arrive at mediocrity <sighs> by remission, but this likewise, here, when they become very aquiline or flat, cause the nose to be so disposed that it no longer yeah. appears to be a nostril. It is, moreover, useful then, uh, for the purpose yeah. of legislation I need a not little only bit to understand what is advantageous to quality by a survey of yeah. past events, Round but also off. to know the condition of other polities and what is adapted to Around each. Off. Hence, it is evident that traveling is useful yeah. for the purposes of legislation, since from hence the laws of nations may be obtained. But the knowledge of history is requisite to political councils. All these particulars, however, are the business uh, of right. politics, and not of rhetoric. Such, therefore, are the principal things which he who intends to give counsel ought to possess. Chapter 5 Let us again, however, enumerate the particulars from which it is requisite to exhort or dissuade, both respecting these things and other things, but nearly both privately to each individual and in common to all men. There is a certain scope to which choice and aversions are directed, and this is, in short, felicity, and the parts of it. Hence, for the sake of an example, 
we shall assume what felicity is, and from what the parts of it consist. For all exhortations and all dissuasions are conversant with this, and with the things which contribute to it, and the contraries to this, for it is necessary to perform such things as procure this felicity, or a certain part of it, or which render it greater instead of less, and not to do those things which corrupt.